ABC Calc, this is going to be your day 62 notes. If we're taking a look at today, we're, we're doing a volume summary of all the techniques that we now know at this point. And I think this first page gives you a lot of great information, not only some great visuals of our three methods, including disk, washer, and shell, but certainly the formulas that go along with those with respect to X and with respect to Y, depending on which axis we're evolving around. So we have our DX and DY equations for volume for disk. Same thing when we get into washers, we're taking the big radius squared minus the smaller radius squared and integrating along the appropriate axes with respect to X or with respect to Y. And then finally, we have our cylindrical shells that we just learned about in our last lesson, which would be thinking about the surface area around the outside, two pi radius height times the thickness, which is gonna become our DX eventually in the integrand. So we have all these different techniques that depending on the situation, it may be beneficial to use a shell over a washer, or maybe it's the reverse. Maybe washers are easier than shells. And it just takes some practice to really get used to which is the best technique. And that's all we're gonna be doing today is practice finding some volumes. So if you look at the first question here, it says rotate the area bounded by y equals x squared, y equals zero and x equals two around the y axis and calculate the volume of the solid generated. So we're gonna approach this from a few different techniques. Let's draw the picture first and we'll see maybe in the end which technique we, we like best. So we got y equals x squared. I'm only gonna draw it in the first quadrant for now because we're gonna bound this by y equals zero at the x-axis and the line x equals two. So here are our three curves and we're gonna take this region, rotate it around the y-axis and then and think about what is the resulting solid going to look like here. Now, when I do that, if I kind of copy y equals x squared over here, and maybe this line at x equals negative 2, there's really two different approaches you can take here. It's definitely not a disk, right? We have this open space in the middle here. It's not the area that we're evolving. It's not connected to the axis that we're evolving around. Whereas if I was rotating it around the x-axis, we could use disk to find that volume there. But this is gonna either be washer or shell. You have two different methods that you can choose from. I'm gonna show you what it would look like using both techniques and maybe by the end you'll have decided which one you like best. Let's start with the shell method because that's the method that we learned about yesterday. So if we're thinking about shell, if we're rotating around the Y axis, the rectangles that we draw have to be parallel to the axis that we're revolving around. Okay. So if I draw a rectangle parallel to the Y axis, We'll do that matching rectangle on the other side. The shell that's formed would look something like this. Okay, and just do your best to draw these diagrams here. Okay, so here's our cylindrical shell whose radius and height we have to determine. So if we think about the circumference there, two pi, the well, the surface area, two pi RH, it's gonna be two pi times. Okay, we're integrating with respect to X here. So we're gonna wind up having from zero to two, the radius at any given point of our cylindrical shells is just gonna be X. And that's very common that when you're dealing with the shell method, the radius is either X or it could be Y if you're spinning it around the X axis. Okay, so the radius is X. And then from there we need the height. Well, the height of all these shells is just gonna be the height along the function Y equals X squared. So it's gonna be times X squared dx. And once you write down and you've decided what the radius and height are, look how simple this expression is going to become to integrate. It's just the integral from 0 to 2 of x cubed dx. So we're going to get this volume pretty quickly by using anti-power rule x to the fourth over 4 from 2 to 0. So if I plug in those bounds, 2 is going to give you 16 over 4, which is 4. So 2 pi times 4. It would be minus zero, so we don't have to write that. So we get eight pi cubic units from taking this region right here, spinning it around the y-axis, and that's using our shell technique. So I am gonna recreate the picture when I talk about using a washer method, because we know that the rectangles that we draw when we spin around the y-axis, if we're gonna use washer, have to be perpendicular to that axis. So same exact situation, we're gonna solve this using washers spinning it around the y-axis. 
Okay, so we got y equals x squared, x equals two, and the x-axis that we're bound by. But if you were to draw washers for this one, okay, what you'll find is that the washers are going to be now a dy example. Okay, so we get this right here, which is gonna get your big radius, and then the smaller radius is gonna be this empty part along the inside here. Okay, that's a pretty good washer. It's not bad at all. All right. All right. So since we're taking our rectangles that are perpendicular to this axis and spinning them around this way to get these, these washers as a result, we're gonna have to um, integrate as x with respect to y. So the equation y equals x squared, this is really x equals radical y now. And we had that this is the line x equals two, so your bounds of integration have to be along the y-axis. We're still going from zero, but if x equals two, we know that the upper bound is gonna be an upper limit of four on the y-axis. And we're gonna think about the big radius here squared minus the smaller radius squared. So using the washer technique, you would have pi times the integral from zero to four. The big radius is the distance to this line x equals two, so that's just gonna be two squared. And then minus the smaller radius is the distance to the function x equals the square root of y, so it's gonna be square root of y squared, and now this is a dy. And as soon as you have that set up, Again, the tougher thing about this whole situation and this whole process is the setup, in my opinion. Let's confirm that if I find the antiderivative, plug in the bounds, that we do get eight pi in the end. So it's gonna be pi from zero to four of, this is the function four minus y. So that one's not so bad either. When I compare the two functions that we've had to integrate, they've both been, I think, relatively nice expressions to find the antiderivative of. So I don't think when you're comparing the methods, that one was necessarily a lot easier than the other. But if I find the antiderivative here, you get four y minus y squared over two from zero to four. So when I plug in zero, I know we're gonna get zero there. So just plug in the upper bound. So four times four is gonna be 16 minus four squared over two is eight. And lo and behold, we get eight pi again, eight pi cubic units there. So, <clears throat> start kind of as you're practicing, decide which method you like best, okay? Unless it specifies that you have to use shell or that you have to use washer, you have options here, all right? Whatever you kind of best see fit, it's it's really up to you. But I think both are, I think, pretty nice in this example. You might come across others where one is definitely easier to use than the other technique. All right, we have one more practice question left in this lesson, and it happens to be find the volume of the area bounded by this parabola, negative x squared minus three x plus six and y equals negative x plus three when it is rotated around the line x equals three. So when we're talking about rotating areas around lines, I, I know we're pretty typically used to seeing the x and the y axes, but certainly vertical and horizontal lines are not out of the realm of possibilities when it comes to doing this type of calculating of volumes. So let's go ahead and actually graph these real quick, just so we can kind of get an idea as to where these functions are located in relationship to the line x equals three. So we get negative x squared and then minus three x plus six, oops, not five, and negative x plus three. Okay. So this is the region we're taking and we're gonna rotate it around the vertical line x equals three, okay. which is sort of similar to rotating around the y-axis, right? So you have two different approaches. For taking this shaded region here and spinning it around the line x equals three, you can treat this as shell or a washer again, okay? So if we were gonna do shell, we would get to draw vertical rectangles because then those would be parallel to the axis that we're revolving around. If we wanna use washer, we have to then do horizontal rectangles. Now, if we're using horizontal rectangles, it's going to be a dy. And think about how much tougher this would be in this example to get x in terms of y. I'm not loving the prospect of that. It's certainly not impossible. 
but that would be the goal if I was going to integrate using Washer. So you can see now, as compared to the last example, I really think Shell is where it's at for this one. Let's draw the picture and kind of think about what this is gonna look like in the end. All right, so we have our function negative x squared minus three x, which looks something like this. And then we have the line y equals negative x plus three, which looks something like this. Okay, and we're taking this region right here, and this is just a rough sketch, by the way. Don't judge me too harshly based on it. And we're rotating around the line, x equals three. Okay, so when I take this region and I rotate around, we're gonna get kind of this matching region over here. Okay, and if I were to draw a shell to represent this, if I draw on a rectangle at some point, I get the matching rectangle over here. We get this very large cylindrical shell. Okay. It's not bad, actually. I'm not hating my picture right now. I could be a harsh critic of my, my artwork here, but I'm, I'm thinking that's decent. Okay. So we have to decide when we're doing shells, what's the radius and what's the height, right? So the radius and the height. Okay. So the radius at any given point is usually x, but that's only if we're spinning it around the y-axis. So what we look at for the radius now, if you take a look at the radii here, is it's going to wind up being the distance here, 3 minus whatever x is. Okay. So at any given moment, the radius can be defined by saying 3 minus x. Right, even when you're to the left of the x-axis, three minus a negative x would give you three plus x, which would give you that total radius and distance from the line x equals three. So the radius part, hopefully that makes sense that we're gonna define it as three minus x. As far as the height goes, the height at any given point for our cylindrical shells is gonna be the top minus the bottom, meaning the parabola minus the linear part. So it's gonna be negative x squared minus three x plus six minus the linear negative x plus three. And if you combine like terms here, it's gonna wind up being negative x squared minus two x with a plus three. So this is the function that represents the height. And now kind of putting all the pieces together, we are using our shell method. So it's two pi from, oops, I don't have those bounds yet. I should really find these points of intersection here. Just to save us some time, you can calculate those using your calculator. You can do some algebra to get there. It's up to you. It is going to be from negative 3 to positive 1. So that's simply just to save a little bit of time here. You'll trust me that calc intersect would give you those values. So it's 2 pi and then radius times the height. So 3 minus x times negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. And this is dx. Okay. So before you go to integrate here, I would probably multiply all that out. It will make it much easier to find the antiderivative in the end. So 2 pi, and then this is going to be the integral from negative 3 to 1 of, if I multiply everything out, you will get x cubed. Then you're going to get a minus x squared, minus 9x plus 9 dx. So now we can use our anti-power rule pretty quickly here to get 2 pi times x to the fourth over four minus x cubed over three minus nine halves x squared plus nine x. Okay, plug in your upper bound of one for everything, plug in your lower bound of negative three, subtract those results. There's just a lot more computation to come here if you're going to do this by hand. But what am I most concerned about in this process? Of course, that you can get this set up right here. So if you got to this point and you're feeling like, yep, I understood how that was developed, then you know what, we're good to go, all right? So I'm just gonna give you the answer in the end if you wanna double check me by plugging in those upper and lower bounds, multiplying by two pi, the final answer should be 256 pi over three cubic units. Okay, so when, when kind of going forward from here, make some smart decisions. Don't force yourself into washer for an example like this, all right? It's not gonna be nearly as user-friendly as using a shell would be. So. For those of you that were kind of uh, skeptical maybe at shells at first, here's a great example to show you that shells can be much more useful 
in certain instances than using a washer. All right, so that's it for our volume practice today. There is some volume practice in a worksheet in the next homework. So that is what we'll be working on next time we're together in class. Let me know if you have any questions.